Hello everyone, thanks for joining. In this video, I'll be talking about REST API and how to use the CRUD operation read. So last week when I created a video, we talked about the create operation and we talked, we delved into how do we retrieve items from a list using um, Ajax jQuery. Um, so in this video, we're gonna be focused on read and how to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you're looking at here is a is a table, a table with some with a a, a table header, service from an inner and, and region, and here is our list, and so we're going to be retrieving the items from this list, and then displaying it on the page here. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's look at our um, code. So I already had a little head start here put some boilerplate stuff in here so what we're looking at is right here at the top we have this event event listener and once the content of the page is loaded it calls this get list items function and within the guest list items function we already have our different our, our URLs set up we get the absolute URL and then we concatenate it to our our, our rest a point our endpoint our list endpoint we get by title this is the name of our list and then grab all the items and then we're using Ajax jQuery and so what this Ajax jQuery requires is the URL which is what we have here and then type and instead of using posts as we did when we were adding items to our list this time we're using get to retrieve the items from our list and of course, we always have the headers. We, we would always have the headers with slight differences. In our create, when we we're adding items, it it had an extra thing with the called the the, the digest. Um, but we just need these headers that you're looking at here for our JSON. And then we have the success, and then we have this error. And these are basically going to call these different functions based on what happens. So if it's a success in retrieving our items, call this function. And if it's a failure, call this function. Now, what's going to happen if it's a success? It passes some information. It, it passes the data that was retrieved. It passes it um, to our on query succeeded function. So I have a console.log data here. So we can see what this data looks like. So let me go to my page. And let me do an F12. And let me do a refresh. Refresh. And on the right hand side, we should see our data. So here it is here, got this object here of arrays. So we have this array, array of um, objects. You know, see key, key value pairs in each array. Okay. And within this array, this object, it has the properties that we need. So title, that's our service, and then region, um, and then permanent and so forth and so on and so forth, you know, so that's what we're going to be retrieving. So let me go back to the code. And so what we're going to do now is let's build out our finish building out our on query succeeded. Okay. So what we're going to do is let me get rid of this line here. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to say now I'm going to create a, a list item var list items equal empty string there and then I'm going to say list items equal to so in order for me to retrieve my data because I don't want let me do this again I don't want the whole object I am looking specifically for just the item so I need to drill down so as you can see it's d dot results and then whichever whatever it is I need so let me come back here to my code and so what we're gonna say I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna use the map um, method JavaScript method so I'm gonna say data because my everything is within this data so data dot D dot results oops, D dot results dot map and we're gonna map 
And if you don't know how the map works, um, let me write this out, my rows. If you don't know how the map works, just make sure you Google it um, and look at it. So I'm going to map everything, map each of my items. Um, and basically the map just returns your items into a new array and you do whatever you want with your items. So I'm going to call my rows and so I'm calling another function. So I'm going to say function my rows and people will, and everybody, every developer does, will do this differently. And this is just the way that I choose to do it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var tbl equal, and what I'm going to do is, okay, let me, I'm going to grab, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the HTML DOM table insert row, but before I do that, let me grab document.get, let me grab, grab a reference to my, my actual table, and it's called service, oops. Service can't spell. So here's my service table. Here's my table with my my with just the, the the header, the first row. So service. So I'm saying, give me a reference to this service. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use. So let me say var rows equal to tbl dot insert row put a negative one in here so what insert row is, is is just it's like a dom table method or method that you can use and all it does is it creates an empty tr and then appends it to my table that i just showed you so it, it does all that for you instead of using like create element tr and create element td and then appending it and all that this is much cleaner so i like this better so now that i've done that and i'm going to tell you so when you use negative one, because it's going to insert the rows below my header. If I didn't, if I use zero here, it'll assert it above my header. And I'll show you what that is like later on. So now let's go and start adding our tables, our row, table rows. So var um, td title equal to rows, rows dot insert sale and so now what i'm doing is i am using another um table dom html dom table insert cell method and it just creates a, a td and just appends it to the you know to my table row to my table row okay um so that's that so now i need to do this for each one so var for each of my different cells so I just did one for this one. I didn't. I need to do a cell for this permanent, interim, and region, and it uses the index. So now my first cell was zero. Now my second cell will be one. So I'm going to say TD permanent. Make sure I spell it right. Equal to rows dot insert. Oops. Yeah, insert cell one. So let me just copy these first two, All right? So instead of permanent, it's going to be TD, oops, I T I N E R A N T, and then this one, this last one is this last one. It's going to be region so td region so now i, I got to make sure i change my index so zero one two and then three okay so now when i do that now what i need to do is now that i've created my cells inside of my row now i need to add the content to each cell so now I need to come here and I just say to the table inner HTML 
Ego to row that title. And I'm just gonna pause the video and create all this. Okay, I've added the row. So, so now I am adding the data from my my that, that was returned that was passed into this function. And the real way that I reference it is it's row that title row dot td permanent. Um, actually, okay, it's not td actually. It's just that permanent without the td. Okay region there you go so that's correct all right let's save and let's go and see what this looks like so let's refresh okay and it looks like we have a area error it says data d is not defined so let's see where this is at oh i see the problem okay what line is that line 24 so in my line 24 I have an extra D in there. So now let's see. Save. So this should work now. Refresh. So my service is showing, but my these other cells are not showing their data. So let's look and see what's going on. So we have row that title, row that permanent. Oh, that's why. So I have it all as title, so I need to have copy. So there you go. I need to insert it into the right cell. So let's save. Excuse me, I have to put that on pause real quick. My phone was ringing. All right, sorry about that. So now that we've corrected this now let's save this and then go back to our page refresh okay, we're getting an error again oh data d okay thought i got rid of that Data that D. So let me go back. Oh, there you go. Okay, that was just the page was cached. All right. So here is our table with all of our tables retrieved using REST API. So let's do a quick recap: page loads, get list items, build up our REST API, REST API uh, endpoint, pass everything here. Make sure we use the type get write correct headers and these are the different functions on success it causes on failure it calls that function we pass in our data we loop through it using the map calling this function and then we build our table in, and it appends everything you know so it only took 43 lines of code now you may be asking you know since i have the jquery library why why aren't i using jquery to do all this and probably jquery may shorten it a few lines and the reason I, I use um, vanilla is because as a react developer I use react um, you use your bit is react is just basically JavaScript you know so I like to keep up keep up with my JavaScript make sure my JavaScript is um, I'm always sharpening the edge of my JavaScript skills you know so that way when I when I use react i'm up to date and i'm not getting confused with jquery so that's why i use this the only time i use jquery libraries when i need to use this ajax because it's much easier to retrieve items from a list using the the ajax it's you know they did this very well very well packaged so i hope that makes sense and you enjoy this uh please like the video and leave any comments below i'd appreciate any feedback thanks bye